CataractCoach.com. Femtosecond Laser Cataract Surgery. Yes, you should learn how to use this laser if you have access. So we will do the incision, other than this paracentesis, the capsulotomy, there are astigmatic treatments on the cornea. You can see the nucleus has been divided into sextants or one-sixth pieces. And there's even a little bit of central nuclear softening being done here. So in this case, it's been submitted by an anonymous surgeon, but I thought it'd be fun to watch together here. So that first incision was the para, now filling up the eye with some viscoelastic. And now the main incision is being opened up. That main incision was obviously made with the femtosecond laser. And you can see that main incision is uh, in the peripheral cornea there, not really, not really nicking those limbal vessels. Now some micro forceps is going to grab that capsulotomy, pull it out of the eye. That was easy. And at this point, there's some hydrodissection. So some hydrodissection coming up to free that nucleus. Now in some of these patients, when you do the capsulotomy cut with a femtosecond laser, it actually cuts some of the anterior cortex edge there. So it can make... Uh, Cortex removal during IA, a little more challenging, but really not that big of a deal. So you can see good fluid waves going across here. Since the nucleus has already been divided into six pieces, it's going to be relatively easy to get those pieces up and out of the eye. No need to do any chopping here, no divide and conquer, none of those methods. Now you should obviously still learn and master the skills of doing the surgery um, without using the laser because it's a very expensive tool. But if you have access, yes, of course, learn everything. So now putting the phaco probe inside the eye, it looks like a left-handed surgeon, so phaco probe in the left hand, and the chopper or second instrument in the right. And you can see those are the six quadrants that are made. And let's see if we can just pull out one. So using that little vacuum in the center, I guess softening out or taking out that center part. And then let's see, can these pieces just be sp split apart? Yeah, there you go. So now further propagating those um, division lines. Remember, the laser is not going to create this division or split all the way back to the posterior capsule because it's, you need some margin of safety there. So it's going to do it more so in the center of the nucleus, anterior to center, and maybe a little bit towards the posterior capsule, but never right up to the posterior capsule for fear of putting laser energy into the posterior capsule. So you can see the pieces are not fully separated here. So the surgeon's taken out a couple of, of, of pieces of the pie so far and then rotating the nucleus around a little bit more. And again, so if you're a patient watching this, look, even with the laser, you still gotta put the faker probe in the eye. The laser's not some kind of magical trick. You still need to have a good surgeon. But just a couple of the steps are done for the surgeon. Now, arguably, the incision that's made here with the laser is actually not as good as making the incision with a steel keratome or even a diamond keratome. Diamond keratome is the best, obviously, but why is that? What's with well, the laser? I thought it'd be great. Well, remember, the laser delivers energy in little tiny spots. And so the surface, if you look at those two, in, the interface of the roof to the floor of the incision that's made with the laser, it's not, it's not ultra smooth. It's kind of like cobblestone. And then similarly, remember that capsulotomy edge, it's not really capsulorex, it's a capsulotomy. That edge of it is kind of like the edge of a postage stamp, tiny little spots there. Smaller, so small that we can't really see that, but it's not torn like a capsular rexus. Capsular rexus, rexus means to tear, and that means it's a lot stronger. So here's cortex removal, looking pretty efficient, and getting all that out, that looks really good. And now time to put the lens in. So certainly, yes, using a femtosecond laser can certainly help in the surgery, especially if you're at the earlier stages of your career and you don't have as much uh, skill set just yet. And so it can make a surgeon who is struggling, let's say, to do a great capsorexis, it can make the results a little bit better. So here you go, polishing up a little bit of that capsule, getting out some of that uh, lens epithelial cell material, and it looks like it's pretty much ready for the eye well at this point. So I'm a little bit tough time keeping that microscope centered here. Just other things I do like that the draping was good in this case, and not sure which femtosecond laser was used here, but I like that there was no subconjunctival hemorrhage Often you can see that with the suction ring from the femtosecond laser, you can often see hemorrhage or bleeding in the conjunctival area from uh, applying the, that suction there and breaking some conjunctival vessels. So again, polishing up the undersurface of that anterior capsular rim. Looks like this capsular is probably about the five millimeter or so, maybe between five to five and a half, somewhere in that range. And then the lens will go inside 
And let's see what we got next. So yeah, we have femtosecond lasers in our surgery center. We've had them for now more than 10 years. And we even have a choice of a, a few different femtosecond lasers. So you can choose which one you like if you want to use it. But remember, it's not going to replace the surgeon's hands. And we've seen now, and you've heard from my videos, 10 years later, it's uh, not that big of a deal. In fact, the refractive outcomes, there are no differences. The only differences that a recent study showed between femtosecond laser and non-laser phaco surgery was that for astigmatic treatments, it was a little bit more accurate. And I can understand that. But remember, that was for a diopter or more of astigmatism. And you know what's better than any corneal incision for a diopter or more of, of astigmatism? A toric lens. So it's not really much of a point. Now here's the lens going in the eye. It looks like it's a uh, diffractive, perhaps multifocal lens. Looks like maybe it's a, a technus family of lenses. So maybe a technus multifocal or perhaps a, a technus synergy lens. Getting that trailing haptic to open up. And that looks great. So if you look at the lighting of this case, what else do you notice? The surgeon is using almost exclusively the coaxial lighting. So you see how the view is just this um, central ring of light, and there's not much around. The, the eyelids look very dark in your video. Yeah, that's just because, and you look at the Purkinje images, you basically see just those two strong central lights and one tiny little peripheral light. So the two strong central ones are the stereo coaxial in line with each ocular, hence the red reflex is very prominent. And that one, that very dim, tiny light just to the side is the paraxial light, which kind of is the overall outside lighting here of the eye. And that's very dim, and that's why the video screen looks like this. So cleaning up pretty nicely. Looks like it's pretty well centered. Time to seal up the incisions, call it a day. So yes, listen, if you have a femtosecond laser in your surgery center, definitely learn to use it. There are cases where you want a femtosecond laser. Maybe it's useful for an intumescent white cataract. That can be useful if you can create the capsorexis even when the you know, pressurized caps are bag or the really loose zonular support. That can be helpful. We've even had surgeons use it for other novel techniques, like for IOL exchange. If you have a phimotic anterior capsule, you can use that femtosecond laser. When you're doing an IOL exchange, you can, that Dr. Nicole Fram and Dr. Sam Maskett have showed us that. You can use that laser to open up that capsule and then you can get the lens out and you have a new capsulotomy. It may damage the IOL, but you're gonna throw it away anyhow. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching these videos. Be sure to check out the website too, cataractcoach.com. You'll get the full text and the graphics and the photos plus the videos. And if you sign up for a free daily email, we'll send all of that to you in your inbox every day for free. Come on, cataractcoach.com, check it out.